Hi there. It's been a while. Since our last video, we've been very busy working on the game. And you might even be watching this video on our brand new Steam page, which we're very excited about. We know that getting into RTS games can be a bit daunting, and so in April of 2020, we decided to upload our beginner's guide video to YouTube as a way to introduce new players to the Fertile Crescent. This was before we created the in-game tutorial, while we were still working on the game in our free time. Here's some footage from that video. As you can see, a lot has happened since then, but we didn't realize just how much until we revisited the video just recently. We thought we'd take the opportunity to highlight some of the most important changes we've made in the last year and a half. We'll also link to the previous video below. This is footage from the current build. The most noticeable difference between the build used in the beginner's guide and the newest development build is the art. We've actually made several iterations on all the buildings and the environments and the user interface. At the moment, we are in the process of redoing the UI again for the upcoming early access release on Steam. Another notable difference is that the beginner's guide only mentioned the importance of foraging and farming. But since then, we've also added animals that can be hunted for food. And the palace. Before we introduced the palace, you could unlock any of the technologies right from the start of a match. Now you need to construct the palace to gain access to the more advanced technologies and military units. The palace is also where you have priests. You can designate villagers to become priests by sending them to the palace, where they will start generating extra knowledge points which are then used to unlock new technologies. In the older versions of the game, you had to pick a technology to start researching. The new system lets you be more reactive by letting you accumulate knowledge points that can be used to instantly unlock new technologies. For unit upgrades, we made it so that any upgrades to equipment are now visible on the characters in the game. We also added unique upgrades to each military unit. These upgrades are also unlocked by spending knowledge points in the technology tree. All the units are good at different things, and with the unit upgrades, they specialize even further. An example of this is the heavy spearmen, who already have decent protection against ranged units. With the upgrade, the heavy spearmen will gain additional health and armor against ranged attacks. Another important addition to the game are the walls and siege units. Walls are important to protect your farmland against enemy raids, while siege units, like battering rams and sappers, are good at breaking through those walls. Battering rams are also able to quickly destroy your enemy's farms by rolling over them, which in turn could starve your enemy. We also added another victory condition, the wonder. This one is for all the lovers of turtling and protecting a well-fortified base, or if you just want to play more peacefully. The Wonder is constructed in multiple stages, with each stage providing additional knowledge points. Waypoints are also new to the game. Being able to queue commands is very important, especially in competitive games. And with TFC having had a focus on online multiplayer in the past, we made sure to add this as well. The last of all the big improvements we made are the changes to pathfinding. We consider this one of the most important aspects of any RTS game. And if the pathfinding isn't good, the game quickly stops being fun to play. This is why pathfinding has been a focus for us. And we have now combined three different pathfinding systems to make it a smoother experience. We've also implemented a whole lot of other, what we call, general improvements. Like villagers using carts to carry resources after you have researched the wheel, improvements to Fog of War, general performance improvements, and a lot of other bits and pieces. We think these changes have really improved the gameplay overall, and we look forward to hearing your thoughts. Uh, if you have any suggestions or feedback, feel free to join the Discord link below. We also hope to be a bit better about doing video updates going forward, and not wait a year and a half between each video. Thanks for sticking with us, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.